Hello. Uh, Hello. and welcome to another podcast of the NC Rowan County Anime Group. I'm here at What the Hell Con on this snowy day of the what, February the 15th? <laughs> oh, man, what a change in the weather, you know. Then it's you know, warm one day and get in the snow today. And this topic for this panel is why I love anime. Well, for me, it's good storytelling. That's what makes anime so fun for me, because there's different varieties of storytelling, like in, let's say, Gantz, which is a very horror type of story, where you have uh, people brought into this room where there's this giant black ball, and it sends you out on killing missions, literally. Now, if you get 100 points, you get supposed to get free at the end of the story. But, it is a, but Gantz is a horror story. It's not for little children to watch, because Gantz always pulled out some of the most, let's say, not very reputable people at times. Uh, so I highly recommend if you've got young children not to watch Gantz, uh, rated R, uh, for, very, for a lot of reasons. There's even a level of nudity, uh, very violent anime. But that's one side of it, the horror. There's also to the side of Sojo, which is also to your romance anime. Uh, there's like a nice little series called Boys Over Flowers, and his and her circumstances is also to consider a Sojo, you know, boy meets girl type of story. And uh, those are also to consider, you know, very nicely done. As far as my book, I've enjoyed watching them. Uh, comedy, well, that is the very most ejectable of all types of what one person may consider funny, another person may find insulting. But one little comedy that I kind of like is The Great Teacher Onizuka. It's about a street guy who, you know, decides one day, okay, I'm going to become Japan's greatest teacher. And he's nothing but a thug. He, you know, uh, he's just basically being street punk, you know, and everything. He decides he's going to become a teacher and uh, rolls himself into a school with a bunch of problem kids at first. And his teaching methods, let's say, is very wild. <laughs> so it's called The Great Teacher Onisuka. Now, originally that came out by Tokyo Pop, but Tokyo Pop is no longer with us, and uh, Disco Media now picked up the rights to uh, The Great Teacher Onisuka. Uh, I do have panelists here, people, uh, for this uh, podcasting, though they did brave the weather, <laughs> and I'm very grateful they're here. Uh, does anybody have any questions they would like to ask me? I do like to have group participation as much as possible. If you uh, want to put in anything, or do you w wish me to still keep talking? <laughs> um, I am a president of an anime club. Uh, I run the NC Rowan County Anime Group. Uh, we're going to be starting this coming December. will be our 10th year of existence. I've uh, been going on now for 10 years. I've been running the group for 10 years. I was originally a co-president and then became president because our other co-president had to retire due to uh, circumstances beyond his uh, control. So I ended up taking over the group. Uh, as far as me doing other conventions, I am going to be at the, uh, my next panel I'll be doing will be at the Triad Anime Convention in Winston-Salem. This will be their second year that they put on this convention. I have met voice actors. Uh, one of my most favorite ones who I enjoyed meeting is Tiffany Grant. I have met Todd Habicorn. Uh, if any of you have ever seen or ever heard of D the Gray Man or Rosary Plus the Vampire, he does the voice of in those two series. Uh, also too, Tiffany has done work in, as far as ADR person in Battle Dolls and Jail Glare and also to Sister Princess. I have met Chris Sable, who played Yami the Snake in Fruits Basket. I've also done work in uh, Dragon Ball Z. Uh, Does anybody have any questions they'd like to ask? Um, all right, you your favorite anime is of all time? That's always a difficult question to answer, because uh, how can you choose one drink over another? Sometimes I would like to uh, sit down and have a nice, good, slow moving anime like the hack series, where a person gets uh, caught in the video game and uh, can't get out. And the friends outside who are also gamers, they're trying to help, you, help this person get out of it. Uh, that's 
but it's very moves, slow moving. It's done by B train. Um, and I like that. And then sometimes I like to go into science fiction a lot. There's a nice little series called Crest of the Stars. And it has a sequel called Banner of the Stars 1 2. And it's more of a science fiction story where you uh, have these two people who get involved uh, the first time they meet. They're part of one, one of them's from a very high advanced civilization called the Ob. And this guy's uh, from a you know, low planet. The Ob take over their planet. They make a deal. The planet still stays intact, but it's now part of the Ob Empire because the Ob's don't allow people to travel without them doing the driving, as it were. They call themselves the Kins of the Stars. They're more used to um, traveling through space. But Crest of the Stars, I think, is very good uh, anime. It, it does move slow at times. I think the Crest was the best one out of the first, you know, like the first story. And the other two just seem like okay with me. Um, so some people say my taste in anime isn't all that great because um, I, I like the movie Tekken, which is based off a video game. Um, it's I've heard people complain about the dub off of it. I've heard complaints about it. But the problem that I always run with Tekken is it's too short. Because you got all these characters from Tekken, and you're trying to put it all in one movie, and it doesn't quite work out too well. <laughs> but I did enjoy watching it. Um, it's a, up to individual taste, what you really like. Uh, I have people who are friends who love One Piece, and then I have people who, uh, who hate Inuyasha, where I like Inuyasha. Uh, the series, so it's really depending upon what sort of you know, what your taste is. You may be wanting something that's a little more slapstick comedy, like in Happy Lessons, where this guy he has his house, he ends up uh, going to school, and the, he's having a rough time. So five of his teachers decide to adopt him as their son. Now he's got five mommies. <laughs> They're treating, you know, okay, this is our son, we're going to take care of him. And then he has a sibling, uh, two sibling stepsisters, as in one, one very young, one's a rock singer. And it's, you know, sort of like basically your harem anime, like Tenchi Muro uh, is. Have you ever seen Tenchi Muro? So you understand about harem animes very well. <laughs> so you do have those types of, you know, stories where you go in comedies and stuff. Um, I, like I said, I'm sort of a science fiction fan, basically, because when I grew up back in the 1960s, I was introduced to like series like Spider-Man when it first came out. Um, believe it or not, Spider-Man did come out in the 1960s. The Fantastic Four actually had an animated series done by Hanna-Barbera. So I'm familiar with, you know, I came along during that time of the rebirth of everything and uh, have a natural love for that sort of stuff. You know, the X-Men, the Fantastic Four, the Avengers, the Justice League of America. I know all those heroes very well. <laughs> and the Justice Society. You know the past very well. But I think that's part of the reason why I like anime so much is because had not been introduced to that genre, I wouldn't you know, involved the way I have. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions or would like to know? So do you prefer the older anime? Hmm, now that's a very interesting question. Um, it's depending upon the story, if I connect with the character. If I find a character in a story that I really like, that I can sympathize with, that really draws me into it. Now I can admit this, uh, there have been times where a certain studio would do something, and I said, I'm going to check it out because that studio did put it out. Um, Production IG, for example, we put out Ghost in the Shell, you know, a very science fiction story. But they put out this nice little pre-French revolutionary story called Léa Chaval de Dayon, which takes place during pre-revolutionary France. And I went and I said, okay, I'm going to watch this. And I was blown away. I have drawn, uh, as an artist, Notre Dame, the cathedral. But when I look at Leia Chevalier Dayon and the Gardens of Poseidon that they had in there, I was just like, man, somebody took a lot of time, a lot of detail, put in the work into it. Um, and I just was really, you know, 
impressed by the quality of that animation they did. Uh, there was also one that was done by Gonzo. It's based off an old uh, Western thriller, but it originally was done a live action Japanese movie. It's called Samurai Seven, or it's based off the Seven is Samurai. And then later on, we made it over here to Magnificent Seven. So that you know story kind of interests me. And when I look at Samurai Seven, there's this one scene where the robot falls off the plateau and crashes. And I've never seen smoke drawn so intimately, so realistic. I'm going, like, man, the time they put into just drawing this smoke. And I'm looking at it from an artistic view, that they took that time to draw that smoke to make it look so realistic. Uh, like I said, it's characters. Um, if I can find one that I really can get involved with. I can watch it animate, and the animation not be so great, but the story and writing could actually make up for it. <laughs> Uh, that's why I think really drew me into Space Battleship Yamato, which is over here, it's called Star Blazers. Because, because if you look at the animation done today, you know, from back then, you know, it looks kind of crude, but then again, you can actually say that can live up to its own style as well. Now, they are remaking uh, Space Battleship Yamato, uh, the movies over in Japan, redrawn the whole nine yards, brand new voice actors and stuff uh, for the... Uh, animated series. They also will be doing out here a new Sailor Moon that's be coming out sometime in the near future as well. I'm still waiting to hear more information about that. But it's the story, I would have to say. You know, if I can find somebody who I connect with, I can go like, okay, that's that's really hilarious. Unless it's a comedy, then you go like, okay, uh, <laughs> that's a whole entire different animal right there. I also like the series uh, the Wallflower. Uh, Tiffany also did voice work in that, along with Greg Ayers, a good friend of mine who I got on Facebook. I haven't never met Greg or Chris yet, but I'm looking forward to one of these days going to a convention and meeting them. Um, they work on the uh, Greg worked on the Wallflower series, also to Sister Princess, and also to Gantz. <laughs> What's really hilarious about Gantz, um, I hope I'm not giving too much of a plot spoiler. Uh, the two brothers, uh, Greg, Greg and Chris, have both done voice work in it. And there's this like really pivotal point of the story where they're talking about killing. And I thought, man, that was so interesting. And, you know, the, the way they were talking back and forth, you know, the brothers. Uh, they also did something called the Dicom Brothers. And I didn't care too much for that anime. Couldn't find it funny enough for me. But I like the scene where they're talking against, and they're arguing about killing you know, the morals of it, you know, when it's right when it's not. Uh, I see you've got a Star Trek fan over here. Uh, what do you think of the Star Trek manga? I haven't, I have not read it. Oh, really? Uh, did you know it even existed? I didn't know it existed. I didn't actually have a copy of it. Okay. Uh, well, I went and got the Royal Public Library to pick up at least one or two of the manga books of Star Trek. The one, the first one I looked at, it was okay. Um, felt the writing was a little bit uh, needed to be sharpened in some areas. Um, I'm looking at it from an artistic view, but it was an okay uh, book. Uh, actually, I thought that the manga they did for the X-Men, uh, called Misfits, was a lot better written. But then again, that's individual taste, you know. Uh, Sometimes mangas do very well. I find mangas very difficult to read because here I am, I'm used to reading right to left and not left to right. <laughs> because the Japanese part from the back from the back book and you're flipping this way and you're going like, oh boy, this is going to be kind of difficult to read, especially when you're about 50, well, I'll be turning 52 February 24th, <laughs> my birthday. <laughs> so it can be quite you know frustrating. But there have been some mangas I have really liked. Uh, uh, Soccer Wars, which is uh, Soccer Tyson. I enjoyed reading its manga. Also, too, I liked Ultramania's manga. I thought that was very well written. I wish they, you know, continued with it. And I 